Um, was there an empty tomb? There are very big problems with thinking there was a tomb at all. He's presupposing that the gospel story is right, that Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus the afternoon he was crucified and put him in a family tomb, uh, and on the third day, women came and found the tomb empty. Um, okay, so what is our evidence of it? Well, the evidence, of course, is only in the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they say that. Um, and it was the tradition that Christians had had for for a very long time. So it's certainly the, the Christian tradition. But there are lots of reasons for doubting that it's right. What do Romans do with crucified victims? Mm. So we have, we have records of, uh, we don't have lots of records. I mean, one of the really interesting things that people don't realize, we have no literary description of a crucifixion from the ancient world. Like nobody describes how they did it. Mm. Like, um, were they typically nailed? We know they were nailed sometimes because we have some nails <laughs> um, that with DNA on and we, we've got that organic material on them. Uh, were they tied? Were they cross beams? Were they stakes? Were, I mean, like, there's all sorts of stuff we don't, we don't really know. We do have a number of references to what Romans did once the person died on their crosses. And the accounts are consistent that what they did is they left them on their crosses as part of the humiliation. Yes. Um, that they would decompose on the cross and be attacked by scavengers. And so we have off the cuff remarks in a number of sources that that's just what they did. Um, and so there are debates about that. We can have debates about whether that happened within Judaism or not. People say, yeah, Jews didn't allow that. It's absolutely right. Jews didn't allow it. But the Jews weren't killing him. The Romans that's were right. killing him. <laughs> Um, I, don't, I don't know of any instance uh, where we have a verified account of anybody being buried on the afternoon of their crucifixion in a known tomb. So how likely is it that they made an exception in the case of Jesus? I mean, we think he would, they would because, you know, he's the son of God, and so he's exceptional. In short, his observation, Romans didn't let the crucified persons buried. His conclusion, Jesus was not buried after crucifixion. So the implication is early Christian belief in the empty tomb is not historical. In a nutshell, this is what Bart Ehrman is saying. He has written about this in his book, How Jesus Became God, years ago. For years I had thought, whatever else we think about the stories of Jesus' resurrection, we could be relatively certain that immediately after his death, he was given a decent burial by Joseph of Arimathea, and that on the third day, some of his female followers found his tomb empty. I no longer think that these are relatively certain historical data. On the contrary, I think both views, his burial and his empty tomb, are unlikely. He also goes on to say this. The point of crucifixion was to torture and humiliate a person as fully as possible and to show any bystanders what happens to someone who is a troublemaker in the eyes of Rome. Part of the humiliation and the degradation was the body being left on the cross after death to be subject to scavenging animals. He questions, why would Romans allow Jesus to be buried in a tomb? Why would Romans make an exception for Jesus? Allowing Jesus to be given a decent burial is contrary to the whole point of crucifixion. A decent burial is precisely the kind of dignified treatment that the crucifixion is explicitly designed to deny. So Bart Ehrman goes on to perpetuate this line of faulty reasoning in his books and interviews. I would like to argue against his initial observation itself and show that strong evidence to the contrary exists. The central problem is that Ehrman generalizes about crucifixion. It is true that crucifixion was intended to be a total humiliating execution of those that stood against the mind of Rome. Usually, crucified victims were left on the cross to die a slow and agonizing death. And so when Bart Ehrman says that Romans generally left the bodies on the cross, it is partially true. However, Bart Ehrman does not take into consideration how Romans were flexible to consider the religious sentiments of a particular community and adjusted their crucifixion strategy accordingly. Jews had this deep belief that leaving the crucified on the cross overnight would desecrate the land. We can see this in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. If a man has committed a sin deserving death and he is put to death and you hang him on the tree, 
his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is accursed of God. We have historical records from the ancient times that tell us that the Romans allowed the bodies of the crucified to be taken down for burial before sundown. Ehrman probably knows this, yet he chooses to ignore and downplay it. Ancient Historical Records on the Burial of Crucified Victims Roman law regarding the burial of the executed is far more nuanced and lenient than Bod Ehrman assumes. We have few historical records, the work of Josephus from the first century and the Roman legal compilation known as Digesta from the sixth century. First, let's go to Josephus. In Josephus' works such as Against Apian, Book 2, Section 73, and Book 2, Section 221, he makes it clear that the Romans, particularly during peace times, did not force the local to break their local laws and traditions. Leaving crucified on the crosses were unacceptable for the Jews. They believed that would defile the land, as scriptures pointed out. So the Jews removed the bodies and buried them by evening which the Romans wouldn't have a problem with since it was a local custom in ancient Judea. This is also well attested by Josephus in the Wars of the Jews, Book 4, Section 317. This is what Josephus says. Nay, they proceeded to the degree of impiety as to cast away the dead bodies without burial, although the Jews used to take so much care of the burial of men that they took down those that were condemned and crucified and buried them before the going down of the sun. Josephus is very clear. Jews practiced taking down of the crucified bodies and burying them before the setting of the sun. Digesta was a compendium of juristic writings on Roman law compiled by the order of Justinian I in AD 530 to 533. Though it was compiled in 6th century, it comprises a great deal of law from the 1st and 2nd centuries. We find important and relevant material in chapter 24 of book 48. Chapter 24 is titled as On the Bodies of the Punished or Concerning the Corpses of the Persons Who Are Punished. And paragraph 1 and 3 are relevant for us. Paragraph 1. The bodies of those who are condemned to death should not be refused to their relatives. And the divine Augustus in the 10th book of his life said that this rule had been observed. At present, the bodies of those who have been punished are only buried when this has been requested and permission granted. And sometime, if it is not permitted, especially where persons have been convicted of high treason, even the bodies of those who have been sentenced to be burned can be claimed in order that their bones and ashes, after having been collected, may be buried. In paragraph 3, the bodies of persons who have been punished should be given to whoever requests them for the purpose of burial. So from the above historical records, we can deduce that Romans did allow the crucified persons a proper burial, except in the case of high treason against the Roman Empire. Not only the historical records from the ancient times, but we also have archaeological evidence of crucified victims being given proper burial in a tomb. Let me present three archaeological evidence for the burial of crucified persons in a tomb. First is a crucified person named Johanna. In 1968, an ossuary or a bone box was discovered in Jerusalem. It contained the remains of Johanna, a victim of crucifixion. He was around the age of 30 when he was crucified, probably for his political rebellion against the Roman Empire. This ossuary dates back to the first century. It was the first of the three entombments or tomb burials of people executed by crucifixion. Judging by the remains of Johannan, the crucifixion was extremely painful and cruel. The heel bones of the deceased were pierced through, and the arm bones suggest having been severely stretched before Johannan's death and pierced with nails. Despite having been subjected to crucifixion, Johannan was nevertheless granted a traditional burial. And the second example, crucified and beheaded victim. An ancient tomb from the Second Temple period was discovered in Jerusalem in 1971 by the Israel Antiquities Authority. A decorated ossuary located inside what is now known as the Abba tomb contained the remains of an individual with two nails still attached to the hand bones of a beheaded victim. 
This is the only case where nails have been recovered attached to the hand bones of a skeleton from ancient Israel. Some scholars suggest that the bone remains might be of Antigonus II, Matthias, the last king of the Jewish Hasmonean dynasty. History tells us that Antigonus II came to a horrific end when he was captured and executed by crucifixion and beheading at the hand of Mark Antony in 37 BC, after Jerusalem was captured and the throne seized by King Herod. This might well be his bones, considering the decorativeness of the ossuary and its hidden location. A Roman crucified victim in Italy. Another Roman burial site containing the remains of a crucified Roman man was found in 2007, not far from Venice in Italy. This time, the remains looked as if the crucified person was simply buried in the ground, ignoring the appropriate rituals. The heel bone of the Roman were also pierced with nails, as was the case with Yohanan in Jerusalem. These three tomb burials increases the credibility among scholars of the gospel narratives of the burial of Lord Jesus Christ after crucifixion. Serious scholars and historians who have studied the ancient records have increasingly rejected Pod Ehrman's claims as false and dishonest. It's false because he propagates a historically false notion that crucified victims were never buried. It is dishonest because even though other scholars have pointed out these facts for decades, he goes on repeating them. Here is a detailed comment by Dr. Chris Evans on Bob Ehrman's claim against the burial of Christ in a tomb. In a recent publication, Bob Ehrman has embraced the dubious hypothesis of John Dominic Crossan that the body of Jesus Christ was left on the cross. I'm not aware of any archaeologist or any historian who accepts this quirky argument. Roman legal material explicitly states that the bodies of the executed, if request is made, can be taken down and given proper burial. Our surviving literary evidence suggests that the bodies of those who were executed in and around Jerusalem during the peacetime were not only permitted to be buried, but were expected to be buried before sundown on the day of death. This was done in order to preserve the purity of the land. The Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea, one of the members of Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, got permission from Roman governor Pilate to take down the body of Jesus and bury it in his own tomb. And the Romans were not making an exception. This was allowed by the Romans. Moreover, Jesus' crucifixion happened at the time of the Passover. So the Jews themselves probably wanted to take the body down, not to let it hang during their most sacred holy season and desecrate the land. So a member of Sanhedrin, who was also an admirer of Jesus, someone with power and access to Roman governor himself, got permission to take down the crucified body of Christ and bury it in his own tomb. All the facts mentioned in the Gospels are extraordinarily consistent with the historical records and the archaeological facts that we know so far. Ancient Jewish burial tradition, historical records of Josephus, and Roman legal document, Digesta, All these tell us that Romans allowed the burial for the crucified victims, except in the case of high treason. The three archaeological discoveries of buried crucified victims confirm these historical records. All these dismantle the claim that the crucified were never buried in the tomb, and so Jesus was never buried in the tomb as well. Archaeology cries out in defense of our biblical faith, destroying the arguments of those who want to question its validity and its veracity. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and support our channel. Click on the bell icon so that you can get notification whenever we post a new video. Also, feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. God bless you all. Shalom.